Hello everyone, and welcome back to the International Airport of Todos Santos, or what's going to be the International Airport of Todos Santos. Uh, today we're going to pick up right where we left off and begin by building the runways, obviously the most important part of the airport. Let's go! So I wanted to start out with a brief explanation of how I came up with this layout. If you're not interested in the whys of the layout and you just want to get to the build, go ahead and skip to the next chapter in the video at the two minute, eight second mark. There are some problems I had to deal with and some compromises I had to make in order to come to this configuration. So the first big problem is that this airport is pretty close to the edge of the map. Basically just the right of screen here is pretty much aligned with the edge of the map. And uh, if you've ever tried to build an airport in City Skylines in this sort of situation, uh, you'll know that the planes don't really play nicely with the edge of the map because they need to uh, take off and then head to a predefined airplane path. So if they uh, take off or land coming from this side of the map onto these runways or off of these runways, uh, it's just not going to work out because they're going to take off and immediately veer around to try to get to the flight path. Uh, so generally, I believe in airports, you're going to have planes taking off and landing in the same direction because you want to perform both these actions into the wind. So it's going to depend on which way the wind's going. Um, but we can't really have that here because uh, if we had them taking off and landing in the same direction, uh, one of those paths is going to take them toward the edge of the map, which just isn't going to work out. So we had to make a slight compromise there. We have these two parallel runways. Planes are going to take off like this. And they're going to land like this, which obviously is not how it's going to be done in real life, but that's just a compromise we're going to have to make. And then this perpendicular runway here is just for show. Uh, I tried various ways to get it to function with the stupid airport AI, and I just couldn't get it to function. So it's just going to be decorative, and it's going to give us some opportunities for some interesting detailing in another episode. So with that being said, let's get into the actual build. Initially, I'm not worrying about the details or the appearance or anything like that. I just want to get the layout down because I have never really built an airport from scratch like this in City Skyline. So I wanted to just take it uh, one step at a time and not try to worry about too many things at once. Uh, so I'm using this pack of runways and taxiways by Seb Nichols. It, uh, as far as I can tell, is the most realistic asset on the workshop, unless you want to make your runways from scratch, obviously. And we're still going to be doing some detailing from scratch, but I think these give a really nice base and they have a nice texture to them. It also comes with an elevated version, which is really nice. It's not actually elevated in terms of game terminology, but it, it's made in such a way that you can have it run above other roads or whatever, like we have this freeway here, and it's not going to look too weird. Uh, so that's going to be nice for detailing later. We're not going to have to worry about covering up the ugly berm that you usually get when you run ground level roads above other roads. Really, the only negative is that it uses the old airport AI. Apparently the airport's DLC, it adds a new AI, but it has to use the DLC version of the runway, which this one is not. So we're going to have to deal with some abject stupidity on the part of the planes, but I think it's worth it to get these nice looking runways. And now for the taxiway system, I'm mostly using these one-way versions to try to force the planes to take certain paths. So first I try making them all connected, so they actually have nodes intersecting at every single intersection. Um, but I pretty quickly found out that that's not going to work because the, AI, the plane AI is so stupid that when you build your own runways like this, they'll end up doing really ridiculous things like using the runways as taxiways and then taking off at like the last few meters of the runway. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so we are going to build this configuration. It's going to be more or less the final configuration of the run runways and taxiways, but we are going to have to change some of these, delete some of these connections uh, to try to force the planes to take certain paths. Uh, but that's something we're going to get into in a minute after we get this layout done.
Now, before I went any further than this, I wanted to test this thing and make sure that we could actually get planes going in and out. And that is apparently a lot harder than it might seem because it takes a long, long time to generate any plane traffic. Eventually, we got one coming in here. Took a pretty reasonable path, I think, to the gate. Uh, and I think I should have just stopped there and said, okay, it's probably working, let's move on. But no, I saw this happen. And I decided to do a little bit more configuration, like I was talking about earlier. So we have all these actual nodes where planes can uh, pick and choose which path they want to take. And uh, we can't allow that because they're so damn stupid. Uh, so I basically break every connection that is not needed for them to take the path that we want them to take to get to and from the runways, which of course is not ideal. In an ideal world, we would just have the planes be smart. There would be some sort of air traffic control uh, running the show and they would figure out a way to get planes in and out efficiently and effectively using up as much of the real estate that we've built as possible. But unfortunately, because of the stupid AI, we can't do that. Now, after I did these so-called fixes, I wasn't getting any more traffic. So I added a couple more gates, just figuring that maybe the positioning of the gate wasn't right. I also added some attractions next to the terminal, uh, thinking maybe there was just no reason for people to get to the airport. And I also decided to use this plain non-DLC plane stand to see if that maybe fixed it. And we, it did immediately spawn a plane. I think that's just kind of standard behavior for the original plane stands is uh, as soon as you put it down, it'll spawn a plane, which is actually kind of nice for testing purposes. Uh, because stuff like this happens. And we need to try this over and over again until we can get it to actually work. you can sum up how uh, this testing made me feel uh, in this one image. Uh, so I deleted everything and tried making the whole thing out of the DLC runways and taxiways in the hope that that would make it function a little better uh, with the thought that I could just cover it up with the other version. Uh, so that didn't work at all. So I just <laughs> deleted everything, rebuilt everything, and then it seemed to work for some reason. So we're basically back where we started, um, but at least we know it works. So we're going to start the concourse and terminal build uh, working back from the runways and taxiways. Because obviously the spacing we put down here for these things are going to be very important to the uh, realism of the airport and make sure there's enough space for all these planes to get around. So I'm starting with these concourses that stick out here. There are two along here. There's going to be a long, more modern one sticking out at the center of this kind of triangle here. There's going to be another one over here. And then we're also going to have a few lines of plane stands just along the main terminal building itself. And I'm just temporarily putting down these plane stand decals just to get a sense of scale. I'm not too worried at the moment about spacing them out perfectly. I just want to make sure that it's uh, in the realm of realism. And we can always go back and adjust exactly where the plane stands are later. This taxiway that I'm adding now that kind of cuts across between the two angles of runway. I'm thinking originally one stretch of it would have been another runway. Apparently some airports built during World War Two had a triangular runway configuration like that. And then in various airports that have evolved from a military airport into a commercial airport have removed one of the runways as they've gotten more data as to uh, where the prevailing winds are. Uh, so I'm thinking originally that would have been a runway and now it's been at least one stretch of it has been repurposed as a new taxiway. And then they've added this stretch that goes right on over the freeway here, which I think is kind of a nice and impressive entrance to the airport as well. You're driving under there and you might even get to see a plane going across that taxiway as you're entering the airport, which I think is kind of cool. 
And it's also a nice nod uh, maybe to the history of Todos Santos. Now, I don't have any uh, history like written down or anything as to their involvement in this universe's version of the Second World War, if there is such a thing. Uh, but maybe there's some connection with the abandoned airstrip that's on the far side of the city. That used to be maybe the main uh, military airstrip here. And then due to some conflict, they built another one over on the other side of town that had a lot higher capacity. And that, of course, eventually evolved into this commercial airport. Okay, now we're gonna take our layout and actually build the concourses. Uh, so in line with the idea that uh, this airport has evolved over the years, I'm thinking there was, of course, originally, like I said, was a military airport. And then eventually when it was converted to a commercial airport, there was a terminal added, just a small terminal, which uh, we're not gonna get to the build quite yet, but that's gonna happen later on. But then there were expansions. We have these concourses sticking out onto the apron and these would have been added in an expansion, maybe in the 1970s or 80s. Um, they're pretty generic looking, uh, but I kind of like the concrete and glass look. It uh, I think is very fitting for the style of airport that I'm going for. But there is this one long terminal that I talked about before that sticks out into this triangular area, and that is a much more modern concourse that was added uh, probably in the early 2000s. There are going to be some other additions and stages uh, to its history as well. Uh, but first I wanted to get some plane stands down so we can get a sense of how these planes are going to navigate between the concourses and the runways and taxiways and uh, just making sure that there's enough space. Uh, all the measurements I did to try to space these things out properly were very rough estimations from Google Earth. So it's not perfect, it's probably a little too cramped, but we are uh, kind of limited on space here. So I think um, as long as the planes have enough space to pull back into the taxiways and uh, get moving. I think as it is, it's good enough to get going and we can always make smaller adjustments once we get to the detailing phase, which unfortunately we're not going to have time for this episode because we have a lot more building to do. Uh, to make sure that we can get this place functioning properly, I'm adding in a hidden road network to the concourses and we're also going to hook that up to the terminal as well later on. Um, so the road network basically runs through the entire airport. It's going to allow for people uh, to go back and forth through the airport, but it's also going to allow service vehicles to uh, provide services to both the plane stands, but also the office and commercial blocks that we're going to add in here in an attempt to draw lots and lots of people to the airport. We're going to get back to that later. First, we need to add some plane stands and some taxiways to connect them all together. So this is where we're going to make use of those two-way taxiways to connect all these plane stands up to the uh, main taxiway system. I'm not putting plane stands at every single gate uh, because that would just be way too much, I think. Uh, and like I said before, the airport AI is so incredibly dumb that I just don't want to mess around with that. And I want to have uh, just some gates sprinkled here and there so that we can get some activity going to and from the airport. And the rest of the gates are either going to be decorated with parked planes uh, once we get to the detail phase, again, not this episode, or they're just going to be perpetually empty. <music> So you may have noticed that up on the left of screen here, just this little blip right here, is uh, one of the airport's DLC terminal buildings and networks put together. And I'm thinking that, well, this is something I've noticed in a lot of international airports, is they'll have a separate terminal for international flight. So that was my thought process for this as well. Um, so this is going to get its own little separate road network to go up to the terminal. Uh, so we need to make a little bit of an interchange for this thing to connect up with the road network. It does end up looking a little weird, I guess, or just a little kind of out of place compared to everything else, but uh, maybe that's 
what we want for this uh, because it is meant to stick out a little bit and be kind of uh, not quite an eyesore but just uh, something that's a little bit off or a little bit different uh, compared to the relative unity of the design of the other main terminal. Uh, so that mostly consists of just adding a flyover ramp from the side of the freeway that's entering the airport. So anyone who's going directly to the international terminal could just take that, get uh, up there, and not have to clog up the main airport loop road. And I figured while I was here, I would also add a turnaround for the main road as well. So if you uh, had to go back to the terminal for whatever reason, uh, maybe it was really busy and you couldn't pull over and pick someone up, you could just take that turnaround there and uh, give it another shot. Uh, this is definitely not the most realistic uh, design in that there's a lot of weaving that goes on and it doesn't provide like perfect access to everything, uh, but I think it's good enough for our purposes and it's gonna provide some nice opportunities for detailing as well when we get to that. As with many airports, a large portion of the Todos Santos Airport is going to be defined by parking. So I'm using this absolutely massive and realistic looking parking garage by King Leno, uh, which I honestly didn't think it was this big when I downloaded the asset, but it is basically the perfect size for what we're going for. And it actually has kind of a similar style to the parking garage that's located at the San Juan uh, Luis Munoz Marine Airport which we're gonna start taking more inspiration from once we actually get to the terminal build. Uh, but anyway, we're putting this parking garage right in the center of the airport loop road. And this is where, of course, people would uh, have short-term parking. So if you're picking someone up at the airport and you wanna go in or something like that, uh, you could park here. But it also is going to, at least in our imagination, <laughs> include the uh, centralized car rental service. So we're going to have bridges that go across from, from the terminal to the garage. And so you could, uh, if you flew in here, you could just walk across there, go right into the parking garage and pick up your rental car. If that's the route you're taking, as opposed to taking our beautiful transit network from the transit hub. But uh, that's beside the point at the moment, because we need to make some adjustments to the uh, airport loop road. So I'm adding another layer of lanes here to access the parking garage. I'm trying to separate traffic that uh, is going to different destinations as much as possible just to reduce congestion. Of course, that's all theoretical because uh, we don't get quite as much car traffic as I was expecting, but I think it, the, the principle still stands nonetheless. So this isn't going to be a primarily detail focused episode, but I did want to do a little bit of detailing here while I was thinking of it. So I'm just adding some uh, bright yellow signage so people know where to go when they're pulling in here because it's a little confusing. I wanted to have one of these entrances be for car rental access. So this is where you would uh, drive in and return your car over on this side of the garage. And then the other entrance just to the left here is gonna be the parking entrance. Off camera, I did add a couple of office and commercial blocks to the inside of the garage. They're just kind of hidden in there uh, in an attempt to draw some traffic going in and out of the garage because obviously the cars don't usually have an incentive to drive into the garage. They just kind of fly through the air from the road and uh, get to their parking spot, you know, just like real life. Um, so that does actually generate some traffic going in and out. Unfortunately, the cost of putting commercial blocks in there is that occasionally we do get delivery trucks driving in, which doesn't really make any sense uh, that they would drive into the parking garage. Um, so maybe I'll get rid of the commercial blocks, but we at least have some traffic going in and out, which I think is better than nothing, even if it's a little unrealistic in terms of the types of vehicles. Just in case you were getting worried that we didn't have enough parking here for some reason, um, we're going to be adding another parking lot. So this would be more for long-term parking if you wanted to pay the exorbitant fee to have your car parked here instead of taking our beautiful transit network from our transit hub. But that's beside the point at the moment. Uh, this is going to be the first of many service parking lots that we're going to build. Uh, most of them are going to take place next episode. We're going to do the land side details next episode. That's going to involve lots and lots and lots of parking. Uh, but this is kind of the central parking lot. This is probably where you would aim to park if you did want to uh, leave your car here while you went on your trip wherever you were going. Uh, one thing that's really hard to do with a build like this is to get 
this sort of uh, concrete network based thing to completely fill in the space that you're trying to go for because I basically wanted uh, this whole kind of triangular or pear shaped area behind the parking garage to be filled in with parking lot uh, just with a little strip around the edge we're going to manually detail that next episode with some grass medians um, but so I'm just really taking the time to go in with move it and node controller and make sure everything is nicely aligned with the road that goes around it I think the final result is quite pleasing to the eye uh, normally I don't like to do uh, giant parking lots that are just fit into the uh, environment like this but I think in terms of the airport they're going to want to maximize absolutely maximize the amount of space they're using especially for something like parking that just takes up so much real estate another element to the design with this parking lot is that uh, because the road the main road entering into the airport has to go down to go underneath that taxiway that we made before. It also, of course, needs to come back up to come to ground level. Uh, so we have this bit of a slope difference between the obviously uh, very flat and level parking lot and the sloping road. So I'm just using some of these grass retaining walls to bridge the gap there in terms of the elevation difference and also kind of set the stage for that grass median detailing I was talking about next episode, which is actually going to be a, kind of a significant part of the episode somehow, but that's for another day. Uh, we're going back to the parking garage really quickly because I thought it looked a little too uh, kind of monolithic or isolated uh, compared to the rest of the airport. I really wanted to integrate it uh, really smoothly into the terminal building, which obviously we haven't built yet, but we're going to be integrating it later. Uh, so I'm just taking a portion of the parking garage, stripping everything else away with procedural objects, uh, merging all the nodes together and hiding them in the center of the, of the building. And then uh, kind of using that as just a module to add these little wings to the parking garage. And this is where people are going to enter. So they're gonna cross the terminal road, uh, go across on these little sky bridges or on the crosswalks down on the ground level and enter into these buildings. And that's where you would rent your car or pay for your parking or whatever. And to allow pedestrians to actually use these crossings, I'm also adding a, just a little hidden pedestrian path network that goes down from the sky bridge down to ground level. Uh, we do actually get some people going back and forth, uh, presumably to get to those office and commercial buildings that I clipped into the parking garage. And then I'm just adding one little wing here. Uh, I'm thinking this would be the front offices for the car rental companies. They would kind of just all share this one building that's attached to the parking garage. <music> The next part of the airport build, I had to take a little bit of a trip. I checked out uh, Charles de Gaulle, Orlando, Dusseldorf, and Newark. Uh, and what all these have in common is that other than just being airports, they have people mover systems. Um, and that's something I wanted to have. Uh, it might be a little bit too small of an airport to warrant uh, this kind of build, but I just really wanted to do it and I've been hanging on to this uh, lovely monorail asset since the very first episode of the series. So for those reasons, we're just gonna build it. It's gonna look a little bit more on like the Newark or Dusseldorf side of things. Uh, I kind of used those primarily as inspiration. I also had to decide between an airside or a landside people mover. Uh, one is on the other side of security, of course. So you can use that to move between different terminals after you've already passed through security, or it can be on the land side and it can move you uh, between the various facilities of the airport. Now, because we only have two terminals and they're not too far apart, I decided to go for a land side people mover. So it can take people in between the terminals outside of security, and it can also pick up and drop off passengers at the parking garage. Of course, it also has a stop at the uh, airport transit station, uh, which is underground. So it ends up being like a multi-tiered transit hub, which I think is actually kind of cool. So the uh, main city rapid transit stops are down underground, and then the uh, people mover stop is a couple levels above that. In terms of the history of Todos Santos, uh, of course it has to be elevated because it needs to cross all this pre-existing infrastructure. I'm thinking that was maybe added on in the early 2000s expansion when they added that nice new modern looking concourse. 
And since it was kind of just tacked on to everything else, we also have to tack on the stations as well to all this pre-existing stuff. So we have one over here at the International Terminal, uh, one at the parking garage, which I need to punch a hole through using PO. Uh, it's a little messy looking, but don't worry, we're gonna come back and cover that up with a nice little end cap. And then of course we already have the station at the transit hub. So we're gonna run some monorail track over from there to the main terminal. And there's gonna be a stop there as well. Now that all went pretty smoothly, but as soon as I created the actual transit line, I started getting this error. And it wasn't catastrophic or anything. The simulation was still running. I could save and quit and everything worked fine, but it's always a little worrying to see an issue with this. So I tried a few different uh, things and some of them seemed to work temporarily, probably just a coincidence. And the error just kept popping up. Eventually I managed to narrow it down to the mod that I had most recently installed, which was Adaptive Networks. Now I'm almost certain it's not a problem with the mod itself. It's either a conflict with one of the older mods that I have installed, or it's just user error in some way. Um, so I did have to remove Adaptive Networks, which unfortunately means that I had to get rid of the custom monorail network that you're seeing here. And I just replaced it with the vanilla one, which I think looks uh, fine enough, not quite as uh, perfect as this one, but it'll serve us well enough. And if it keeps that error from popping up, I'm perfectly willing to make that sacrifice. Uh, now we have this uh, kind of messy little station to take care of. So I'm using these tunnel props by Ronix and uh, misshaping them <laughs> a little bit with PO uh, to get this kind of cool, I don't know exactly uh, what style of architecture this would be, but I think it uh, has kind of an interesting shape and texture to it that I think stands out in contrast to the rest of the terminal that we're gonna build shortly. So it just helps to emphasize that these things have been tacked on in separate expansions from the rest of the airport. And uh, while I was building this, I noticed something. If you glance into the background here, you'll uh, be able to see just how many people are using our transit station here to go in between the airport and the city. I also realized that uh, any monorail network is gonna need uh, some sort of maintenance area as well. So I forget exactly which airport I took inspiration from, but I saw one that had a people mover system and it basically just had a very tall and skinny building that uh, is just enough space probably for like one train to go in there. And we really only have a couple trains, so you're not gonna need a gigantic uh, maintenance yard for these monorails because they're really not going to need maintenance too much compared to say our metro network which has many many trains running back and forth constantly so it's just this little cute building over here uh, kind of next to this temporary cargo area that i built off camera that's going to be reworked quite a bit in a later episode <laughs> Now, I had no idea where to start with the terminal build, so I just decided to go back to the inspiration of the Luis Munoz Marine International Airport. It used to look a little something like this, and now it looks more like this, at least in this close-up view, uh, with the original building here now being used as an airport hotel. Uh, so that's what we're going to begin with. I couldn't find a building that uh, perfectly replicated that look, so I'm going to take this uh, hotel bay and shape it up just a little bit with PO, making it a little squatter and a little shorter. And I also thought it was a little too bright blue for our color scheme. I wanted to more match like the, the shade of blue we have on the parking garage. So I just uh, add a color rectangle and turn the opacity down until we get something resembling uh, what we have in the parking garage. We're gonna go with that sort of light blue theme. I'm not gonna try to match the color perfectly across all the different builds we're gonna do, but I want something that generally has that sort of look. And I also really liked the hotel sign that they have up on the uh, real life version. So I wanted to do something very similar here using these same 3D letters that I used last episode to make the uh, main entrance sign for the airport. And now probably the most iconic feature of this hotel is that it has uh, the old air traffic control tower on top. Uh, now, I don't know what that's currently used for, but in this world, it's gonna be a restaurant because I think that would be a really cool feature to have for an airport hotel like this and a nice callback to the history of the airport. 
And uh, with that building out of the way, it's time to get to the actual terminal buildings. I'm using basically the same ideas I used for the concourses, taking this terminal building pack and arranging them in a way that kind of fleshes out uh, the area that we need to fill in. I'm not worrying too much about the shape or the texture of the roofs because that's something we can come back and adjust later and we are going to come back and adjust that quite a bit later. Um, as you can see, like when you stretch these roof textures with PO, it doesn't look too great. So we're just not going to worry about it and we're going to make sure that we have this whole area filled up and that uh, there's some kind of, uh, I hesitate to call it a story, but some sort of evolution that you can see in some of these different areas of the terminal that have been added on or remodeled over the decades. And basically what that boils down to is just using a few different assets, sprinkling them in here and there to kind of create some layers, uh, both horizontal layers, so moving uh, back from the airport loop road, but also vertical layers moving up from what would have been the original uh, terminal building, which just would have been a small little building compared to uh, this kind of mess of various structures that we have now. I also wanted to do a little bit of structural detailing down here with the transit hub just because I saw this little space and it looked kind of weird to just have this long span of building without any support. So we're going to come in and add uh, these custom pillars uh, from the North American Freeway Pack just because I think they have a nice texture on them and uh, just clean up this area down here as well. That's a lot of what uh, the detailing is going to be this episode. We're not going to detail the whole thing, obviously, because we're going to have whole episodes dedicated to doing that. But I did want to do some of these more structural type of details. So supports and beams and uh, surfaces on the ground, that kind of stuff we're going to take care of this episode. But first, of course, we need to actually get all these buildings down. I thought this sunken plaza looked kind of cool. I mean, it's really only sunken because the departures uh, road deck is elevated and this plaza is at ground level, but it kind of appears sunken when you're up here on the road. So I wanted to make something kind of like that that lets you peer down into one of the main passageways of the terminal. Uh, so I'm just following the shape of the buildings and the road here that we have uh, with these pedestrian paths, the elevated version of this asset. And I connect it up to the internal road network of the terminal so that people do actually walk back and forth across this, which is kind of cool. And uh, so that ends up defining the shape of the walkway above. And then below, I'm just using these terraforming roads to clear out all this ugly terrain that's sticking up there. We're also going to run some invisible pedestrian paths through there so that people also walk across there. And we do get people walking on both levels, which I think is super cool. I don't think the built-in pillars really make sense for this sort of walkway because it's really sticking out from the walls. So they're going to have supports coming out from the walls rather than having standalone pillars for the most part. Uh, so I'm just using these expressway pillars, sizing them down with PO and uh, having them stick out like this, just so you can see the little support nubbins to kind of uh, hint that there are more supports farther back. So if you were a pedestrian down there, you'd be able to see that. Of course, we can't just have plain concrete. That's uh, kind of ugly for this sort of thing. So we're going to come in with some of these surface props and uh, cover up the floor with that. Uh, so where we have these open walls, I'm just adding some concrete walls in with IMT just to quickly block the uh, void off from view. And I'm using these plaster walls up top because I just think they look a little bit nicer. Uh, so with that in mind, I needed to do a little bit of detailing. So we just have uh, some planters going along uh, just to try to break up people from uh, going in like one long straight path and clogging that up. Uh, it kind of forces them to choose a path and spread out a little bit as they walk through the plaza. Plus, it's just pleasant to have some trees down here and kind of cool to have this palm tree sticking up uh, toward the second level. I also add a park entertainment block to try to attract people to this, which uh, actually works. We do get quite a few people walking through this later on. 
Uh, I wanted to make sure there weren't any like ugly blank areas anywhere, just in case uh, I get some camera angles in the cinematics where you can see, uh, like for example, this door over here. So I'm just adding some doorways and that sort of stuff to make it uh, seem like this is an actual usable place. And then just some other miscellaneous details of some maps and benches, trash cans, etc. Okay, with the plaza done, the next big problem to solve is the part of the terminal that actually lines up against the road. Um, so I'm going to use a variety of buildings here, starting with this New Zealand office building. I think it has just like kind of a nice modern-ish look, which goes along with the idea that uh, the main part of the terminal would have been uh, had an addition and also a remodel probably in the early 2000s along with that new concourse that we made before. I probably could have left a little bit more room on the sidewalk, uh, seeing as you're going to need to have passengers and baggage be unloaded there. But, you know, it's just a game, so I'm not too worried. Uh, down below, I wanted to use a different set of assets. Uh, they're not as worried about the uh, passenger pickup area down here because it's just not as visible as the place up top. So they're going to save uh, their budget for remodeling the stuff that's more visible and impacts the uh, perception of the airport rather than this kind of practical stuff down here below. Uh, on this curve here, I decided to, instead of trying to fit a square building into a round network hole, um, that was weird. I decided to make a custom building, uh, basically with IMT using concrete walls and uh, these door props. I think it's a little bit easier. It's also a little bit uglier because it's just very basic compared to the detail that we get on some of these lovely assets. Uh, but I just... I couldn't bear the thought of going in with PO and manually fitting buildings into there. Some of these are going to get changed as we uh, get to the details over the next couple episodes, uh, but I think you get the general idea of what we're doing here to try to get these shapes to fit in. I also need to add a couple more uh, areas of roof, so I'm just using some ploppable asphalt, uh, both with IMT and with PO, just to get these last little few spaces filled in. Uh, now, doing all this made me realize that there's actually no way for people to access this monorail station. So in the spirit of having this uh, monorail station stand out, I wanted to have a uh, similar aesthetic for the area that leads up to it. So I'm using props from the exact same asset pack and just kind of creating this little building in here. And I'm also going to create a custom station. Uh, don't ask how people get over to the far side of the platform, uh, because they don't. But we did need a platform over there because there is a monorail stop. So I had to make a small compromise there, but uh, I think it's worth it because it ends up looking kind of cool, especially with these little glass barriers on the end. Uh, obviously, you don't want people tripping and falling out of the monorail station onto the roof of the airport. That's probably not good for business. <laughs> Because this unwieldy station uh, sticks so far out over the road deck, uh, we have to add some supports as well. And then uh, this little strip of, uh, I suppose, gravel here that has some nice landscaped vegetation in it so that you can see it when you're walking up to the station uh, through the windows that I'm currently adding, just uh, clipping this office building uh, to get a couple of rows of windows here to show that there's some sort of passageway inside uh, to provide access to the station. The San Juan airport that we've been taking inspiration from has uh, this somewhat distinctive uh, kind of like pleated concrete awning. And I didn't really have any asset that looked quite like that. So I had to take this covered outdoor gym and remove everything except the roof because it has this kind of curved look to it that I'm going for. And then we're going to take that and run that all the way along the departures drop off road. That does get a little annoying to manually curve these along the road, but I think it's worth it to get this look. I didn't want to have the same pattern just all the way along the road. Uh, I wanted to switch it up a little bit just to represent that there have been different expansions like I've been talking about quite a bit. Um, so we have a shortened version of it over on this side of the departure road. And then we also have just this little uh, more standard kind of awning next to the hotel, uh, just using a copy of the hotel and isolating the roof and kind of using that as an awning down below. Uh, now, one thing that we're missing, of course, is an ATC 
tower. Uh, I searched high and low on the workshop and I couldn't really find one that uh, was what I was going for. Uh, the closest one was uh, from the Hong Kong airport, which is a very cool ATC tower. It has this little building attached, I assume for some sort of administrative purpose. It's probably a little big for an airport of this size, I'm guessing. I don't know that much about airports, but like I said, it's the closest to the style that I wanted. And it also has a color scheme that almost exactly matches the hotel and the parking garage, like I mentioned before when we were working on those. So I think it's probably the best option. Uh, there's some pretty good ATC tower assets in the workshop, but there's honestly not as wide of a variety as I expected. Anyway, I wanted to kind of make this area stand out a little bit more by adding some more buildings around here that have a, a different roof texture. Uh, we're gonna come back into a whole like roof pass and uh, cover up some of these ugly stretched out textures. But for now, I wanted to add a little extension to the airport over here. This is a bit more of a practical place. This would be where they'd have some storage and stuff, kind of just as a break in between the main terminal and the international terminal. Now, speaking of that, obviously at the moment they are separated. So say if you went, uh, if you took a flight in to the main terminal and then you had to go over to the international terminal, you'd have to go through security again, which is something that everybody always hates. I, I assume there's nobody who likes that sort of setup. Uh, so over here, uh, the current stage of the airport expansion in terms of the lore of Toto Santos is that they're connecting these two terminals. Uh, so you wouldn't have to go through security again if you had to transfer to a flight uh, from one terminal to the other. Now that we've gotten the main structures of the airport all built, it's time to get a little bit of detailing out of the way. Uh, now, first thing I realized that having this fence from the elevated version of the road for this elevated uh, departure road was not going to work for detailing because it's just ugly, it gets in the way, and it doesn't make any sense. Um, so I turn it into the ground level of road to get rid of that. Uh, that introduces some problems in that we have this really ugly concrete berm on the edge. So I'm going to do a few things with IMT to cover that up. First, we have, uh, of course, we need a barrier of some sort. We've gotten rid of the fence, so I decide to add in this slightly uh, nicer looking wall. Uh, and then I I just don't like the concrete berm sticking out. I think it looks a little too plain. Um, so we're gonna cover it up with something a little bit more uh, cohesive and slightly interesting looking, uh, which I'm using these prefab house pillars, uh, turning them sideways and just spacing them out so it looks like a nice continuous strip of concrete along here. Of course, it's not much more interesting than the plain concrete texture, but we just have that texture already everywhere in the city. So it just kind of gets your eye just like starts tuning it out. So I want to do something that just sticks out that little extra bit and makes it look more like a structure as opposed to just another piece of the road network. Of course, we also need to have some more traditional IMT road markings, uh, creating a few lanes for passenger drop off and through traffic and also one emergency vehicle lane on the outside. Uh, down below, we have this six lane road that's just been sitting here begging to be detailed for a couple episodes now. And the reason I set it up like this is, well, it's a pretty common setup at international airports to have the arrivals lane split up into two parts. So on one side you have transportation, whether it's taxis, uh, buses, whatever. And then the other side is for private vehicles. So we're going to go with that exact setup here, uh, just creating a median to separate them in IMT. I think it's easier in this case just to use one single road asset and decorate it up with IMT instead of trying to fit in two road networks side by side. And uh, then also with IMT, I'm using those exact same prefab house pillars to make some pillars this time. And then I do, just like with the upper deck, I do some road markings, a few crosswalks here and there with some signs warning the cars that there are going to be people crossing constantly and they should probably be a little bit careful. I'm going to use these same pillar props in various formations across the road deck to show that there's some sort of support here. In certain places where the road deck reaches farther out, we have these pillars sticking out from the other side of the road and then uh, where the road deck starts to kind of angle back toward the sidewalk, uh, we just have them sticking out like we did for the monorail station before. Because this side of the arrivals road doesn't uh, really have any pedestrian access on the other side, I wanted to give some indication that you probably shouldn't cross here. Um, so I'm adding these uh, kind of decorative uh, partitions, which I think look kind of nice, and they add a, a little bit of variation to this ground level stuff, uh, which was kind of just starting to all blend together and didn't really have a, a unique look to it. And then obviously over where we have crosswalks and we have pedestrian access, there aren't any barriers other than this uh, kind of nice little decorative fence, but that's not really stopping anyone from crossing there.
Now, when you build something like this with IMT and you have like medians taking up driving lanes, you need to do a little bit of management with Traffic Manager. So I'm just banning cars in the median lane, all vehicles. And then on the private vehicle side, I'm banning taxis. And on the taxi side, I'm banning private vehicles. Pretty straightforward. Another issue is that uh, these roads are normally meant to be main avenues. So I have to lower the speed limit quite a bit uh, for all of those. One thing I'm gonna keep bumping my head against as we build this airport is trying to get enough traffic or at least the appearance of enough traffic. So I've tried different things. As we've been building off camera, I've been plopping in a whole bunch of various service and attraction, residential, commercial, and office blocks, uh, just clipping it into the main airport structure, uh, trying to get uh, some people drawn to the airport that way, uh, but it's just not quite enough to get the amount of traffic that I want. Um, so I'm trying to simulate that by plopping down some props. Of course, over here, this is our uh, taxi and transportation lane. So we have taxis, uh, tour buses, and uh, some hotel shuttles as well, uh, ready to pick people up. A couple taxis up here on the departures deck as well. Obviously, you're not gonna have them waiting there uh, because they just drop people off, but there are a couple in the process of dropping people off. Also have a couple of police cars as well, made by Slen, uh, keeping an eye on things, making sure nobody's going over the speed limit. Not that that ever happens in Toto Santos, but just in case. I also have these uh, very cool invisible taxi stands, so we can actually have uh, a dynamic uh, arrival and departure of taxis down here, which I think is a really nice little thing. Instead of just having them all be props, you can get a little bit of movement coming and going, in addition to all the vehicles that are just driving through on their own. It's a little tricky to get it lined up with the lanes because you can't actually see the vehicles in their parking spots when you're moving it with Move It, but I just keep checking back on it occasionally and adjusting it as needed. And now uh, just about all that's left is the roof textures. Uh, we're not going to do a full detail pass. That's going to be taken care of in one of the detail focused episodes, but I did want to give the textures a little bit of a facelift. One thing that's always bugged me about the vanilla game, and I think has bugged a lot of people about the vanilla game, is that the amount of runway it takes for a plane to take off and land is way, way too short. Which of course makes sense if you're using the vanilla assets, because the runways are fairly short and uh, are meant more for gameplay than for anything else. Um, but someone made a calculator where you can adjust the settings of each plane to allow them to have a more realistic takeoff and landing. So I went through the Advanced Vehicle Options mod and changed the settings for each plane as needed. And now I think the takeoffs and landings are quite a bit more realistic, which I really like. I've linked that in the description in case you're interested in using that spreadsheet. It's a little confusing at first, but uh, pretty easy to get used to. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Toto Santos. I really hope you enjoyed your time at the airport today. And I hope to see you in the next one, where we're going to be starting the process of detailing. Bye-bye. tu nido, paloma linda, anda y prueba tu volar. No tengas miedo, mi palomita, que nada te va a pasar. Anda y prueba tus alas bonitas, sin que el temor te limite. Vuela, paloma, bien alto mi vida, no dudes que siempre amanece, ya amanecerá. Ay.